to Academy Radio. Radio has been a saving grace for us during the months where we have been forced to stop normal life in lockdown. For many, the voices on the radio have become a source of friendship and companionship. Music has the power to shape our lives and that's been more evident during the past 12 months. There are many icons of radio who we aspire to be like. We are lucky enough to speak to one such icon. Welcome, Nick Grimshaw. Hello, thank you for having me on Workington Academy Radio. Nice to be here, guys. Who or what inspired you to pursue a career in radio? I always loved the radio. I used to listen to it with my family on the way to school every morning, and I used to find the host of The Breakfast Show proper funny in the mornings, Chris Evans and Sarah Cox. Um, My mum wasn't their biggest fan when I was younger, so I used to really enjoy that they were quite naughty and quite cheeky and that my mum wasn't that much of a fan. We found that quite funny. Um, But yeah, I always loved music and I always listened to music a lot in our house. So I wanted to do a job that meant I could, you know, talk to people and be around music. So radio was perfect. What's your favourite part about your job at BBC Radio 1? I think my favourite part of my job is hearing people's stories, getting to hear funny stories either from listeners or from guests, just hearing those brilliant stories that make you really, really laugh and make everybody listening laugh is my favourite thing when we get to hear a, a weird and wonderful story from someone. What is your proudest moment? My proudest moment, I'd say, was... Probably getting the the breakfast show at Radio 1 because that was what I really loved as a kid. And when I was talking about wanting to do radio, I always wanted to do the Radio 1 breakfast show. And I always imagined that's what, you know, that'd be my dream, dream job. So when that happened, um, it was very surreal. But yeah, that was probably my, my proudest moment. What has been your favourite place that you have travelled to? I think my... Favourite place I've travelled to is Namibia in Africa. Um, I went there last year to do a thing for Sport Relief, to do a challenge where we had to walk 100 miles across the desert. And um, it was really, really special. It was really beautiful. And it's right on the coast, Namibia. So there was like sand dunes next to the ocean. So it was a really crazy landscape to witness the sort of waves going up against the sand dunes. We're in the middle of a third national lockdown. What do you miss the most about normal life? I miss most my family, because I've not seen my family, because I live in London, but I'm from uh, Manchester, so I've not seen my family for a really long time. So I miss seeing my family. And with the radio, I really miss having people in the room. You know, like normally we have a producer and people who work on the show in the room with us and guests come in and other DJs pop in to say hi. Um, And we've not had that. So since March um, 2020, I've been in a room every day on my own, literally talking to a wall. So I mainly miss people. Your Radio 1 colleague, Greg James, told us that his strangest moment during the first lockdown was Craig David sending him a bar of chocolate. Can you top that? I think my strangest moment in lockdown was just... The, the everydayness of of being in an empty city like London and where Radio 1 is, you're so used to seeing it full and busy and crazy and going to work every day, cycling into work through a sort of empty London was really, really weird because I'd never, ever seen that before. Um, so I think that's probably my strangest bit, having to go through like an empty city every day on the way to radio. What has been the most funniest moment of your career? Uh, The funniest moment of my career, I don't know if there's one standout moment, but the the funniest times that I have at work on the radio are whenever Alan Carr comes and sees us. Um, He's so funny and so brilliant and he makes us laugh from the second that he arrives. Um, So I think any time with Alan Carr is honestly my, my funniest moments ever. Do you have any weird talents? I don't have any weird talents. I don't have any talent. Um, I thought I wanted to do pottery. Like, I like the idea of, of doing pottery. Um, and we went and tried it out. And I was 
so bad at it that the guy teaching the lesson had to sort of hold my hands to help me make a pot. Um, it was bad. It was it was quite bad. I'd like to say pottery, but no, I'm not talented at it. Have you ever been starstruck before? And if so, by who? I have been starstruck. Certain people, because, um, you know, you see a lot of, of pop stars or people off the telly in Radio 1 a lot. Um, and, and some people, yeah, you do get very starstruck by. I think anyone that I liked or I saw as famous when I was younger, I am starstruck by. So David Beckham was one that I remember being very sort of intimidated by when I had to interview him um, because all that was going around in my head was it's David Beckham, it's David Beckham, it's David Beckham, it's David Beckham. So I don't think it was a very good interview. If you could make a new TV or radio show with anyone, who would that person be and what would the show be about? Ooh, that's a good one. If I could make a TV or radio show with anyone, I'd love to work with Annie Mac. Um, Me and Annie used to do a radio show together and we used to do a telly show together um, and I love working with Annie um she's one of my best friends in real life and we you know speak all the time in real life so we'd love to do something together I don't know what it would be I don't know what it'd be about we love music we also have started to like gardening so maybe we could interview musicians in gardens maybe is that a terrible idea probably in 2020 you took part in the sport relief the heat is on challenge what was it like trekking across the desert Honestly, it was one of the best things I'd ever done. It was really hard. Um, It was really rewarding. It's quite emotional. And it was slightly terrifying as well because we were in the middle of nowhere and we were walking around this part of Namibia, which is um, usually like closed off, like they're like protected sand dunes. So there is, you can't see any sign of life it's just sand um so it felt like you're on another planet what is something about your job that your listeners probably don't realize you have to do something that i didn't realize would be part of radio one is timings um i am terrible at maths always was really really bad at it at school and every now and then we have to work out timings precisely so you've got to work out exactly what time you have to play a song so that the news comes on at the right time and you get to work out how much time you've got to speak sometimes i have to have a pen and paper out for that that's something that i am not good at being on time and working out the the correct time needed to fill. What are the hardest and easiest parts of working in radio? I'd say the easiest part is that it gives you a a place or a platform for you to be you. So radio, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be, you know, know exactly where you're going every single day on the show. There's sort of space to be yourself and to breathe and to sort of navigate your way through the show, which I think is nice that you can be yourself on air. Um, I'd say the hardest part is, um, I don't know what the hardest part is. Maybe it's hard sometimes when you have to interview someone that you're a big fan of or you're a bit intimidated by. um, And sometimes you're a little bit nervous about going on the radio. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Oh, Preston. Preston's got the big question. I, do you know what? I wouldn't pick it, but I'm not against it. I, every now and then, I'll try it and I'm like, do you know what? I don't hate it. I think, Preston, if you want it, you do it. (laughs) Um, Kira. What are your predictions for music in 2021? Well, hopefully there'll be loads of great music. I think that... Because, you know, a lot of, well, not a lot of musicians, a lot of everybody has been stuck in their houses over the past year. Um, You know, sometimes when times are hard, we get really good music because musicians have got time. You know, they've not been touring. They've not been doing films or getting distracted by other jobs. They've only had themselves and they've been at home. So hopefully they've been writing really great songs. So it might be a brilliant year for music after a year of loads of great musicians being forcibly locked in their homes. We're all missing live music right now. What's the best gig you've ever been to? Ooh, big question. Big question from Lou. I don't... Ah, that's tough. I think maybe in recent years I went to see Kendrick Lamar. Um, and I love Kendrick 
I think that he's an amazing lyricist, amazing music maker. And then the show he put on was phenomenal as well. It was um, it was really special. So yeah, maybe maybe Kendrick Lamar. What's your main wish for 2021? My main wish for 2021 is that we can all see our family and friends again. And fingers crossed that we won't have to do another year of lockdowns and that 2021 will be the year that we can go outside and be with our friends and be with our family again. Thanks for taking the time to answer our questions, Grimmy. We are so grateful. We hope to be able to work with you again in the future once life is back to normal. Guys, thank you so much for your questions. Really, really enjoyed answering those. So thank you for sending them. And um, hope everything goes great with your radio station. Can't wait to hear it. And any more questions, just get in touch with us. All right. Thanks, guys. Academy Radio. Hello, it's Grimmy here from BBC Radio 1 and right now you are listening to Workington Academy Radio.